I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Backrack next. Mike's a uh, vascular specialist from Avera Heart Hospital in Dakota. And uh, I've known Mike, gosh, since he was at the, was at the Cleveland Clinic many, many years ago. And uh, really pleased and happy to have him here with us. Mike, you just tell me when to move your slides forward. All right. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, yeah you can start with the first one. Um, you know, um, I have no disclosures. Uh, I am a consultant. So so I had just picked a few cases. And um, for those of you who don't know, I I'm, I'm, was very fortunate. Gary came to visit us, showed us the device. And uh, then shortly after, we had an opportunity to, to use it. And uh, it worked great. And so I became a, kind of an instant fan. And I keep sending him texts every time I do a case. So that uh, now I'm kind of a geriatric guy. So I see all these old patients. I don't know where Bruce uh, you know, and you guys see these young patients. But anyway, this was, you know, this was um, one that I thought was kind of interesting because all of us who do cases, you know, paraprocedural complications are, um, they don't happen too often, but you know, you, you see a patient and you're going to do a standard aeroiliac occlusive disease. You're going to do a stent. And the next thing you know, you're um, in deep trouble because you've now had a paraprocedural thrombus or fragmentation. So you can go to the angio slide. Uh, next slide, Gary, there. So this was, you know, we thought, oh, this will be a good case. We'll get this iliac open and... Um, um, we did and uh, thought, boy, this is going to be great. And next thing you know, we've got no flow um, down in the left uh, uh, common femoral segment. And you can go, I didn't bring all the slides. Go ahead to the next slide. And so basically what we had here was a, uh, an embolic event to uh, essentially a chronic, the SFA is chronically occluded in this patient. But the profunda really is a critical vessel, as you can see. It's large, provides collaterals. And we had really not intended to do anything with the SFA, but now we've, we've taken this. Um, and I apologize, I don't have, um, I had taken some additional pictures, but this was a very organized uh, material. And um, so we thought, well, we'll use the pounce device and uh, you can go to the next slide. And that's what we got out. So, um, and uh, you saw from the previous angiogram that we reestablished uh, um, a good flow in that profunda and basically managed to uh, snatch success from defeat. So, um, you know, it just was a, 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 and go to the next slide. So the, the kind of the teaching point just was that embolization is a risk. Um, you know, this was likely very organized uh, material that we had managed to embolize when we did our total occlusion. You know, yes, you can use thrombolysis and other aspiration techniques, and we've all tried those. You can use stent entrapment. Not a good place to stent entrap at the right at the common femoral profunda junction. That's a kind of a no man's zone, at least for me. And so, um, in this case, we were able to thrombectomize it. Um, um, I will tell you in the past, I've sent these cases to my surgical colleagues for open uh, embolectomy, uh, just because of the fact that we didn't have good tools. So it now gives the interventionalist another, uh, another tool in the toolbox to potentially deal with a potential complication. So um, you can go to the next slide. I think I... Um... Mike, let's, uh, let me ask you a question about this first, because... I mean, you you have an environment similar to what I had, which is a really good working relationship with your surgeons. And so, you know, when we had these, yeah, we'd send them to the OR. But man, if they had to go to the OR, and then you got to go talk to the family of the patient, even at our institution where everybody was saying all the right stuff, they were like, well, what went wrong? <laughs> and so you had to spend more time talking to the family. You had to make sure they didn't think that, you know, somebody did anything wrong. But it's a complication. And, you know, complications are things that, you know, people can interpret differently. So the more we can get done in a hybrid OR or in an angio suite without changing what we're doing from our original plan seems from my standpoint and my experience to go much better with the families and patient. Is that is that your uh, experience as well or where were you guys at? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, this is a case that although it was a complication, it was totally transparent to the family and to the patient. 
we just went ahead and did it and dealt with it. We didn't have to move the patient. We didn't have to take him to the operating room. You're right. I didn't have to go talk to anybody. Um, you know, I didn't have to worry about um, uh, incision breaking down. Um, you know, I live in the food belt. We have lots of well-nourished folks, just like you have been down in Louisiana. So, uh, you know, you're, it's, you know, you think twice about doing a, a, an open femoral cut down in a situation where you're dealing with an obese patient that then has the risk of infection and all the other sundry sorts of complications that can occur. So there's no question that it changes, it changes dramatically. You know, this was a, this turned from a, from a, a major complication and a major problem with really an ischemic leg became a, really a minor sort of thing that we took care of um, at the time. Hey, Molly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, did you, uh, if I understand the case correctly, you stented both common iliac arteries? I did, yeah. And then I it embolized into the left. Oh, and then sorry? embolized. So, yeah, if you notice, there's a sheath in that left side. So, so um, did you have any uh, concerns about taking your right groin sheath up and over your pre-existing stents? And do you intentionally uh, place your common iliac artery stents to allow for contralateral access in the future? So, so um, a very good question, Bruce, and one in which um, I think that um, um, I've learned the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. I am very careful about trying to uh, not extend the aortic bifurcation. That was something that was promulgated in the past. We saw lots of other colleagues years ago do that routinely. Um, every time I see one of those cases that I end up with and someone stented up in the aorta, I swear and my, my <laughs> techs have to calm me down because it's, um, it's in, my, in my view, that's sort of amateur tracks now. Um, that shows that whoever did it didn't, you know. So I think you have to basically anticipate that you're going to re-intervene at some point. This is a pr progressive disease in which these, you know, it's a, uh, people, people often require um, recurrent or uh, additional procedures. And if it isn't an aeroiliac procedure, it becomes an infraingual procedure or an infrapopatial procedure that you have to have access to. Access is key. So I am very careful about it. And um, there are, you know, the, one of the things, the CRAB technique for some of these patients that have complex aortoiliac disease where the terminal aorta is involved, I do, um, I've been using the BBX system, you know, with uh, placing an aortic stent uh, right to the terminal ilium and then bringing the iliacs up. And I found that that also provides much better access um, for the future rather than trying to build the bifurcation up with two uh, stents uh, in parallel. So, yeah, I mean, that's been a learning curve and I think that's, um, that was a good, uh, certainly a very good thought. Super, thanks so much.